News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, musers? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code, and welcome to the weekly update for the week of April 9th through April 15th. Uh, so this week I've released the image zoom widget. Uh, so I'll quickly go over uh, the features of the widget and how to use it in Adobe Muse. Uh, so here uh, it's a really great widget. It it allows you to uh, zoom in on images on hover, or if you're on a touch device, once you tap on the image, the image will zoom in. Um, so here if I hover over this image, we can see that we have this nice zoom effect. Okay, and I have a few different uh, images here. We have this image here. Looks good, it's uh, of a car, so you can zoom in on different parts of the image. And here we just have some wings from uh, a dragonfly. All right, so there's a lot of uh, different options or a few different options that uh, you can kind of cut that you can use to customize the zoom. Um, so here I'll go back to shop and I'll just read the features included. Um, so the features of this widget, you can add any image. Uh, you can have multiple instances on one page. You can set the image fitting. You can change the image position on the X and Y axis. You can set the image to responsive width, responsive width and height, or stretch the browser width via the resize option in Adobe Muse. And you can contain the zoom within the image container or have the image zoom out of the widget container. So you can have it kind of like just scale up or just scale within the container, uh, the widget container. Uh, you can enable or disable uh, image movement on mouse over. You can set the zoom scale for the image. You can set the zoom speed for the image. You can set the zoom easing for the image. You can set the cursor type for the image and it zooms in on tap on touch devices. Uh, so that's the widget here. Here we have a few of the widget options. Here's the community section if you had any questions about the widget. And this video will be here uh, as well. Uh, so you can take a look at how to use uh, the widget on the widget page here. Uh, so to get access to this widget, you can simply go to newsforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. So the image zoom widget is right here. Uh, here you can, you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. So I'll quickly go into Adobe Muse. I have a page here with, with some text that says image zoom widget. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the library panel here to the right. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library, library, okay? And I'll open up the panel. And here I'll type in, um, I'll just type in image zoom. So here we have the image zoom widget. So we have the at first, which we'll place which we will place at the top of the website. And then we have the image zoom widget. Um, so here I'll take the ad first, I'll click, hold and drag, place here at the top. And that's all we have to do with that widget, with the ad first widget. And then I'll bring in the image zoom widget. So here I'll click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse. And here we can see it says add an image. So I'll open the widget options by clicking on this circle with the arrow. And here we have the options. So if you have multiple image zoom images or yeah, images with uh, this widget, um, then and they all have the same options, you can leave the instance number the same. Uh, but let's say you had different speeds for the zoom, then you would want to have a unique instance number for each image that has unique options. And I'll demonstrate that. So for now, we'll leave the instance number at one. Um, so here we have the image option, so we can select an image. So I'll click on add file and I'll just select an image here. These images are from Unsplash, um, unsplash.com. They have great images that you can use for your projects. And here for the image fitting, we have scale to fill, scale to fit or original size. Um, I'd recommend leaving it at scale to fill because the effect works best with this option because the image is filling the entire widget container. And then when you hover over the image, it just zooms in. Um, but if you wanted to try with these different options, you can do um, yeah, original, sky, original size and scale to fit work really well. We can see here um, it leaves the image at its original di dimensions um, and then you're zoomed in on a specific part of the image. And then if you wanted to with the original size, you could change the X and Y coordinates and zoom in on a particular part of that image. So as we can see, that image has changed. 
or you can just say scale to fill and it'll try to fit the entire image within the widget container. And I'll just bring back the X and Y coordinates back to 5050 um, there. So it looks good. So you can move the image. The X and Y positions work best when the image fitting is set to uh, original size uh, here within the image fitting. Okay, so then we have the zoom options. Um, so here we can work with the, the way it zooms. Um, so initially, once you add the image, uh, you can just go to file, preview page and browser and you'll immediately have an image uh, an image zoom. So if I hover over, we can see it, it zooms over the image and I can move the mouse around and uh, we're zooming in on different parts of the image. Okay, so let's work with the, the different zoom options. So here I can uncheck contain zoom. So if I uncheck that and I preview, we can see it actually scales the image up. So it's not being contained within the widget container, um, it's just zooming in the image. Uh, so that's an interesting effect depending on what you're going for. Um, so I'll contain the zoom again. And here we can uncheck move on hover. So in this case, it'll just zoom in, but it won't move when the user hovers over the image. So we can see it just zooms in the image. And that's an interesting effect if you want uh, just the, the zoom to stay in one position and you don't want it to move around when the user hovers over the image. Okay, and then I'll go to the next option. So I'll enable these options because I do like those options there. So the zoom scale uh, we have here, uh, one is the initial scale. So if I say one here for the zoom scale, we're gonna notice that nothing happens because that's the original size of the image. So if I hover, nothing is happening. Um, so, you know, two is pretty good. Uh, you could do something like, you know, something drastic like four. You do want to be careful with this because if there's too much zoom, then the pic the image might not look great. Um, so I'll go ahead and preview. So here we're four times the size of the image and we're really zoomed in. All right, so it still looks good. I mean, it's not gonna distort the image, um, but yeah, that's the, the, uh, the zoom scale. Okay, uh, then we have the zoom speed. So it's in milliseconds, uh, 1000 milliseconds equals one second. Um, so here I could say something like two seconds and if I preview it's going to be really or not really slow but a bit slower to zoom in and moving around the image is also a bit slower okay so that's the zoom speed I'll set it to let's say something like one second so 1000 milliseconds and then we have zoom easing uh, so you can have a lot of fun with this um, kind of depends what you're going for, but this just cha this just changes the easing at which the image zooms and at which the image moves around uh, within the widget container. So if I say something like uh, ease in out cubic, we're going to notice a slight difference in how the zoom moves for the image. So I'll go ahead and preview. If I hover over, we can see it kind of has that interesting like it has an easing to it. So it's not just a direct zoom. And then if I move around, it also has an easing. So wherever I move my mouse, we have that interesting easing effect. All right, and I'll go ahead and change the image. We might be able to notice it a bit more uh, with a different image. So let me try something like this. And you know, I can just resize the, the widget to make it larger. I can resize the widget container and I'll preview. So we're noticing kind of has an interesting easing as I'm, I move around the image. All right, so that's the easing. Um, and then you can select the cursor type. So there's a few cursor types here in this section. Um, so, you know, let's say I wanted a, a crosshair for the zoom and I'll change the image again, something a little bit darker, um, maybe something like this. And I'll preview, zoom in and there we go. So initially, if it, there's a lot of zoom, it'll look pixelated maybe for a second, but it, the widget does a great job in bringing back the quality of the image once it's initially zoomed in. All right, looks good. So you can change the speed, the easing, the cursor type. We see we ha now have this crosshair for the cursor. Um, yeah, so it's really customizable. Um, and you can set all the resize options for the image uh, within Adobe Muse. So, you know, let's say I change it to another image here, do something like this. And let's say I want the image to stretch to browser width. I can just select the widget, 
go to the resize option and say stretch to browser width. All right, and then I'll go ahead and preview in the browser. And now it's stretched to browser width and you can do something interesting like that. Okay, and let me just resize it again. Uh, you can say responsive width or responsive width and height. So here I'll just say responsive width within the resize option and we'll check out the responsiveness. So if I resize, we can see it's responsive in width and height and still works really good. Okay, or I could say responsive width and height and if I preview, so let me do that again, I kind of did it a bit quick. So responsive width and height, okay, and then I preview. We're gonna notice that it changes in width and height when I resize the browser, and I can still use the image zoom. Looks good. All right, so that is the image zoom widget. Um, it's fairly straightforward. We have the image options. So you can scale to fill, scale to fit, or leave it at, at its original size. You can select an image. You can change the image position. And then we have the zoom option, so you can contain the zoom or have it just scale. You can move the image on hover. You can set the zoom scale. You can set the speed, the easing, and the cursor type. And the add first uh, image zoom widget needs to be at the top of the page before beginning. And we did add that right up here. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, I will show if you have multiple instances on one page with different options. So here I've just copied and pasted, and I'll go ahead and change the image and we'll do something like this and I'll go ahead and preview and when I zoom in we, we notice it has the same same options so let's say I were to change the options for the second one um, and I'll just change the zoom scale to like 2 and we'll uncheck move on hover and contain zoom and I'll set the zoom speed to 0 so let's see how that looks so I'll go ahead and preview in the browser and we're going to notice something interesting so if I hover over the zoom speed is gone for this, and I hover over this, and also the zoom speed is gone. Some of the properties have been applied, but they're, they're not quite the same. So this first one is inheriting the properties from the second one. So if you did want distinct options for each, you just want to give each one a unique instance number. So right there. So some of the properties will be applied differently to both, but things like the speed and the easing and the cursor type Will be, will be the same if they have the same instance number. So I'll go ahead and preview. And now because they both have different instance numbers, this one retains its properties, its speed and easing. And this one, because there's no zoom speed, um, is now just, you know, it, it just immediately zooms. So we can work with the second one and change the properties now to anything we'd like. So I can say something like five seconds for the zoom. I can contain the zoom and move on hover, I can change the easing, and things like that. Uh, so basically what to take away from that is that if you have different speed, easing, or cursor type, you'll wanna have a unique instance number. Also, if you have different image fitting, you'll wanna have a unique instance number. So in best cases, if you don't have the same options for both images or you know however many images you have or image zoom widgets on the page, um, you'll just wanna give it a unique instance number. If all the images have the same properties, you know the same image fill, the same same zoom options, then you can leave the Im the uh, the instance number the same. All right, I kind of went around that topic a, a little bit, but that's basically what to take away from that. There, so we can see because the image zoom is set to five seconds, it takes quite a while to zoom in on the image. All right, so hopefully that was clear. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, yeah, basically, if you have different options for different images, uh, simply change the instance number, which is right here. Okay, so one last thing that I'll show, which I think is really cool, uh, you can use the image zoom widget in conjunction with the parallax tilt effect. Um, so here in the, uh, the library library panel, I'm going to type in um, parallax tilt. Um, so here we have the parallax tilt effect, and the first thing we want to do is place the add first widget. So here I'm going to click, hold, and drag, place into Adobe Muse. And then I'm going to bring in the parallax tilt effect main element because um, we're just going to use the main element here. And I do have a video tutorial on this um, and I'll leave a link in the show more section below. Um, so here we have the widget. We notice in the widget the graphic style name is tilt one. Um, so here we're going to apply it to the image zoom widget. So I'll just select it, go to the graphic styles panel here to the right. And if you don't see the graphic styles panel, you can go to window and click on graphic styles. 
And here I'll create a new graphic style by clicking on this icon here. Looks like a piece of paper with a folded corner in the lower left. And I'll double click on style. It opens the graphic style options. Sorry, I'm zooming in so much, but just uh, want to get everything here uh, kind of demonstrated. So here we're in the graphic style options dialog box. So all we have to do is rename it to tilt one because that's the name that is in the parallax tilt effect widget. So now we'll have a parallax tilt to the image zoom widget and this will call for a really unique effect. So it'll be zooming in as well as tilting. So I'll go ahead and preview and it's tilting and we're zooming in at the same time. So I really like that effect and I'm actually gonna work with the zoom a little bit because I don't, I'm not particularly, I don't really like how it's zooming in at the moment. So I'll just change it there and I'll change the scale back to two and the zoom speed, I'll change it back to 500. Okay, and I'll go ahead and preview. So yeah, the, the zoom was just a little bit, the easing was uh, kind of interesting and it was taking too long to zoom. So that we have a nice zoom effect and we have a tilt. I could even add a glare to the tilt and that makes it look really nice. And I'll change the image so we can see it. Um, we'll bring it back to this one uh, there and I'll go ahead and preview. So we zoom in and we have like this interesting glare uh, to the image. So it's a really fun effect. Um, and you could even couple it with the uh, parallax scrolling widget and just have images down the page where the user can interact, like zoom in on the image and tilt it um, as they're going down the page, which is a really fun and interactive thing to do on a website. All right, so that is the image zoom widget. Um, here I coupled it with the parallax tilt effect. And yeah, you can just do a lot of a lot of fun things with the different widgets at Muse for You Shop, um, and I'm really excited about this widget, the Image Zoom widget. Um, just makes it uh, really fun to interact with images on the website. It's really customizable. You can change the zoom amount, which is the zoom, zoom scale. You can change the speed, the easing, and the cursor type for the image zoom. You can reposition the image as well, and you can have multiple image zoom widgets on one page with different options. Um, simply by changing the instance number. If they, set, if they have the same instance number, um, they can have, you know, they can have the same options uh, as well. Uh, so hopefully that was all clear. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And also on the widget page, you can comment as well. All right, so that is it for this tutorial. Uh, to get access to the image zoom widget, uh, you can simply go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. Uh, the image zoom widget is right here. Here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and templates I come out with for $39 a year. Here are the features included, a few of the widget options, the community section if you have any questions about the widget. And this video will be right here as well. And we have the preview page so you can take a look at a few different examples here. So you can set the zoom amount, set the zoom speed, set the zoom easing, and move the image on mouse over. All right, and on uh, tablet and mobile devices or touch devices, uh, the image will zoom in on tap. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.